This video is sponsored by Wasabi Power. What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and this new series, Rig Culture. Now, those who've been following me for the last couple of years, you already have heard of this series on my older channel, but this is gonna be slightly different. In this series, I will walk you through rigs that I've built for specific shots to help solve problems on set, uh, visual problems that is. And this can be a camera rig, lighting rig, set design, you name it. Now, just like previously on my other rig culture series, I did showcase different rigs. Now, I don't wanna to spend too much time doing that, but there is some value to that. And it will get you all involved with the series as well. So I'm still trying to figure out what that will be. But for the main part, it's about building rigs that solve problems. That's the main goal of this series. So if you're excited for that, make sure to stick around and support the series so it can kind of get out. And I just encourage you just to share it at least and comment what your thoughts are for this video. Now we had a recent client, Clever Supply Co, hired 2016 to produce, shoot, and edit their newest product, the Clever Sling. We instantly wanted to create some unique perspective showing off the bag in the hands of different photographers. And what better way to actually do that is POVs. Sounds easy, right? Now, looking at the bag, I can already tell there are a few major issues that I need to solve. How do I get the right perspective, the right height and distance of the camera, and how do I make the bag not sag and create unwanted creases? I just wanted to just jump in here real quick to tell you about today's sponsor, Wasabi Power. Wasabi makes affordable power solutions for your cameras. They have a wide range of offerings for you to choose from, including an LPE6 and MPF batteries. Most recently, they released a line of V-mount batteries. Now I've been using the 95 watt and the 150 watt batteries to power my lights and cameras. Each V-mount battery has a USB-C port, a D-tap, and a LED battery indicator. So if you're someone who's looking for new batteries, make sure to check out the link in the description below and use discount code CINEDAILY to get 15% off your next purchase. Again, thank you Wasabi for sponsoring this video. Now moving to the parts that I need to use to figure out how to build this rig, I thought about the base of it and how can I make it rigid enough. Now Todd made a beautiful bag and it pained me, it pained me to cut into it. I laid the cheese plate on the bottom of the bag and centered it. Then I used a marker to mark the hole placements. Grab the X-Acto knife, which allowed me to cut underneath the lining, as well as cut through the leather. Now once I made my cuts, I placed the bars parallel of the cheese plate, and I just needed to get a rough idea of how this is going to bend or whatever will happen to it once I put more weight on the opposite end. And I just need to make adjustments after the fact. And then later on, I did change the bar placement to perpendicular of the cheese plate, which gave a much better support. Oh, and by the way, for this whole production, I did opt in using the Fujifilm X-H2S for the entire shoot. We used two of them for the interviews, all the B-roll, the bag POV that you see here. Nothing but Fujifilm X-H2S. Okay, so now my first attempt with this was not the greatest. Uh, I just had to try it out. Uh, I took my wooden camera 8-inch ultra arm with this sort of Gorgira tri-head setup with the other magic arms attached to it. And the idea was there is the yeah. uh, I guess you can say this is prototype one right now. Obviously the framing is kind of weird, but that's kind of like the looking up bag. I could get further out, but uh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, so this attempt didn't work as well. And it wasn't far enough to give the right perspective that we we're trying to go for. The position was just too low and it was pointing up. Now it is a look that could be something for something else, but again, the weight was just pulling it and it was just gonna look strange. And since I was using a wide angle lens, perspective was very important so we don't make the bag look like it's just bulbous and too large in the frame, right? We want to give an exact perspective for it um, as close as possible for real representation of what it is. That's all I wanted to say. So the second setup, I had with me these two 15 inch steel rods from Bunny Camera. This gave me the right distance that I needed to get the correct perspective that we wanted. It oh my gosh, that was cool. Oh. 
So on the back end, I have these loops for 15 mil rods that I can just screw right into the cheese plate. And on the opposite end, I had the small rig 15 mil rod attachment for cameras. And I just attached that to the bottom so that could be my base. And on top of that, I have one little quarter 20 screw or three screw, I can't remember which one, um, that connected directly to the iFootage uh, fluid head, um, the smaller one. I think this is the K5. I'll put, make sure to put it up here. And this allowed me to get the right height that I needed for the camera when looking at the bag. And it gave me enough space where I can kind of block out the rail so you won't see the rails. Now, Seven Artisans did send me over their new cinema lens for the Fujifilm X mount. This is the Vision 12mm Cine lens, and it is a great little lens. There were several lenses I could have chose for this project. Um, I have the DZO 16mm, I also have the uh, SLR Magic 12mm, and then I have this one. I decided to go with this one because one is a little bit lighter, it's much lighter than the DZO lens, and then I would have to put on the Metal Bones adapter to get the full frame equivalent for that 16mm. I couldn't put any NDs on the 16mm because I didn't have the right clamp for it, or it can't take any screw-ons because of the the, the element is bulges out. And then the SLR Magic didn't have as much close focusing distance um, as this one does. So this is why I chose this lens over those two lenses. I believe it's only 14 centimeters, which is very close. Um, you can use this in so many different unique ways. And I like having wide angle lenses with close focusing distance because you can just get some really cool perspectives. We did use this on some other really just low, close, unique shots of like cutting leather or, you know, just kind of just top downs. But that's what I kind of use it in. And this really shine and they match. This actually matches pretty well with the DZO lenses that we use for the rest of the set. So that's the lens I did choose. And this has the standard 82 mil thread, which is great. So I put, you know, my Cine Bloom or I put my VND on here when I couldn't grab the mat box. So this was a great way to just kind of be very quick and, and useful. And this is where I kind of let like native mount lenses shine because it is just goes right into it without any fuss. And you just go and put it on your camera and just kind of just rock with it and just roll. Like I was saying earlier, I did bounce between my VND, Moment VND, but also I had the Tiffin. 0.6 ND. So when we did some, uh, with, when I just need to knock down a little bit of the exposure uh, without having a drastic change with four stops, I just put the, the 0.6 and it was just rock that with the matte box, which was great. So yeah, this was pretty much the final build. I think it worked great. I was able to take off one of the mounts that were underneath the bag and just use one and we put that 45 degrees. So it allowed us to get a different angle. Um, and then, you know, the shot itself, when you're walking with the talent, you would try to mask the walk um, of the talent so you won't have too much of a, an imbalanced bounce. So if I was going up, they were going down. You didn't really want to want to have that. It was pretty much I want to keep the same steady bounce. And then um, when I was operating the camera or when like now I was just operating the camera, we would do some like nice swing arounds and stuff like that. So I think the rig turned out really great for that perspective. Again, the client was happy. We solved a visual problem. And that was the goal of this. And uh, this is actually my first time making a bag POV um, rig. And obviously there's tons of different ways to do that, but um, this turned out really great. And I hope that you learned something from this. Again, all of the parts that I mentioned were going to be in the description below. Very inexpensive parts. I've been collecting different parts all over my career as a filmmaker from small rig, mainly from small rig because they're just cheap and affordable. Um, that's probably the best way to kind of start just collecting stuff and it's just fun trying to build this. So as the series grows, I hope to just get more advanced um, in this space, but also help on the lower level stuff because I know a lot of us, we're just still figuring out things that we can do with our own money. And that's the point of this series. So yeah, uh, let me know what you think and I'll catch you guys on the next video. See ya. Yeah, that's that's true. True. Joshua, tell the, tell the vlog what you made here. Yeah, so I... Uh, I was going to say,
track. Vio. Vio. Actually, I could, because this will be a very rough, raw vlog. Mm -hmm.